What's going on? Knuckle Hedge, GKM Gaming here, another LEGO Legacy Heroes unboxed video for you. And today I'm bringing you what they say is the hardest node of the anniversary event, the Primo node. And you know what? I agree. This took me the most tries. But I found a pretty easy combination and a pretty easy key. Obviously, everybody's going to use a Roar and Glider. There's literally no, probably no way to actually do this without a Roar and Glider. You have to use their Primo. You have to use their, I believe their, their Sal or their, their Chef and their Bash, whatever. Chef is very key in this, right? Because between Chef and Glider, with Glider, Chef's um, AOE heal becomes a really big AOE heal. But the key guy in this, which some people might disagree, but I felt like the key guy in this was Trent. I've always thought pretty highly of businessman Trent, but he does offer some much needed damage that this team really, really needs. Some people will say use double primo for the double ultimate, keep their peps down. I like Trent. So I like the damage he brings, I like the tank melting that he brings. But let's talk about wave one. Wave one, take out Gorwell, take out a reed, right? Obviously, you guys get, get rid of Gorwell. Like, Gorwell's just all around, pain in the boot. Wave 2 comes, now you got a Jens and a Locust to deal with. Now, Locust is a little bit annoying to deal with, because the only way you have to clear that taunt is with your Primo. Your 7-star Primo, by the way. You actually get a little taste of what it's like to have 7-star Primo. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's better than 5-star. So, pop that Primo ultimate when you can and go after Jens because you don't want to deal with a Jens ultimate. You don't want to deal with Jens uh, second special, killing one of your figures and you can't revive them with Aurora and then your gold trophy's over. So Jens, because Jens has that second special, I mean, on top of just being really strong and annoying to deal with, that second special makes Jens a priority if you're running a reviver, especially. Uh, be a Bazilla or Yuffie or Aurora. So after those gens, get that back line of reeds. Try to get them out as quickly as possible. Uh, another thing I like to do is save my ash uh, fire hydrant for when I have a pretty fair amount of stacks. I usually try to look for five stacks. You saw ash went down there. No big deal, right? Just like with a lot of these long-winded nodes, survivability is key. Keeping Aurora alive is key so she can keep bringing things back. But don't let it get past you, right? Don't let don't let too many people fall just to keep Aurora alive because then you're just, you know, you gotta keep the whole team healthy because Aurora, especially with the, the nerf to the glider a couple updates ago, really can only handle so much reviving. She's only gonna go so many times. So, Annoying is kind of Locust is going to get his taunt back. There's not a lot of ways to take it away. So if you got to take out Locust before the last read, but I'm going to just tell you, prioritize the reads after you get Jens out because you triple read with all stuns is is something pretty pretty dirty. Now another thing you got to know about the glider is anytime these heroes get buffs, they also heal. So that's really important to know because now Primo just became somebody who has a little heal with two of his abilities, right? Primo taunts, everybody gets speed up, and a nice little tiny heal. Primo gives everybody attack up, everybody gets a nice tiny heal. Chef does his AoE heal. That basically, the Chef AoE heal is basically like bringing everyone back to full health, it seemed like. So that was pretty cool too. Uh, so anytime you taunt with someone, they get a little bit of a self-heal. So that's really key with Sal. Sal's, Sal, I mean, you can see throughout this whole video, you're gonna see what a beast that Sal is as a tank. If he gets debuffs on him too, that self-heal just becomes, like you saw that, that AOE heal from Chef right there. Like that's a big heal that you don't normally get from a 25% heal, you know what I'm saying? So once you get it down to about Cactus Girl and Verda, I would probably leave them for last. Uh, I would use just basics. I wanna save any of my special abilities, ultimates and stuff, try to refresh my cooldowns. Uh, that briefcase is also pretty big for Trent too. Save that for when you need a big hit. 
All right, the next wave comes. This is a, there's a lot of priorities you could take with this wave. Uh, of course, you know what I'm gonna say, take out gens first. Now this was what this wave initially did give me some problems, right? This is where I really got stuck the first couple of times I played this. And that's where I kind of realized what I was lacking was the ability to kill things quickly as I needed to, right? Especially that, you know, when you strip that taunt and you strip, you know, that stealth or something from Kartoski, you want to be able to kill quickly. You see Businessman gets that big briefcase hit. That's something that's really going to help you out having that extra damage. Now, my Businessman is seven star. He's an easy seven star. So veteran players probably have him at seven star just because they want the master tiles or stuff from Brickspedition. I get it. He's seven star. He's only gear six, uh, but I have all of his abilities maxed out. I always thought highly of Businessman. I really hope he does get a rework. But anyway, back to the match. So Jens is out. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Like Quincy's a healer, so you kind of want to try to focus down Quincy. But you also have to deal with, you don't get uh, taunt strips that much. So I made a little bit of a mistake going after Quincy here. I think that I should have just went right after Locust. But on the flip side, he probably would have healed back anything I hit him with. So probably just focus down Locust right after he taunts. Try to take everyone else down a little bit. A little bit at a time. Uh, that briefcase special is actually gets a 30% damage boost against tanks. So you definitely want to save that for when you're going after your locust. Now I definitely hit a little bit of trouble here, and I definitely have said definitely a lot in this video so far. But I hit a little bit of trouble in this wave, and you're gonna see this wave just takes a long, long time. Like my ash goes down. I gotta revive my ash. It's really just a waiting game until you can get Chef to kind of bring everyone back to full health. Locust gets off an ultimate. Now I've everyone disarmed, which that doesn't help either because you can't do any type of healing with just basics. Ash dies. Everybody gets a nice little boost from that. Bam, we're, we're taking out Locust. Primo really he hits like I would say a wet noodle, but I don't want to uh, I don't want to insult wet noodles everywhere because he doesn't hit very hard at all. All right, Locust down, just down to these four. Still really really difficult, and it was actually at this point in the battle that I I still hadn't realized that there's four more figures coming. But I do think that this is where the battle kind of climaxes in terms of difficulty. Now, I was going back and forth. I didn't really know who to attack. I tried to fire Hydrant, Gorwell. It did absolutely nothing. So I'm at a point in this battle where I'm like, am I going to win this? I, I don't really know. So I'm going back and forth. I think here I would say Quincy is the guy you got to go down. And this is where I realized it that, all right, he's got to heal. He's, he's going to throw um, buff immunity on me, and he's manageable. Whereas Gorwell, with that self-heal, between the self-heal and Quincy's heal, it's just not manageable. Uh, another downside is Chef's Dizzy is not as useful as it you know, could be against some other teams because countering is not a big thing for space. So I found myself using his basic more, which is nice because the speed down really helps. So try to be strategic even with just things like chef's basic of okay i want to make sure that gorwell and quincy are the one i'm hitting with this so i can bring their speed down and uh the other key was saving your primo ult not just to strip things away but you have to remember primo's ult also strips stealth uh pep so when you get it up to five stacks of courage it's a really good time to use it because you're going to bring all of their peps down to zero, which is why I could see how the double primo strategy works. But I personally went with Trent. This was my first time using Trent, and I, I nailed it gold star. First try, spoiler alert, we get it here. All right, so I do think Trent is the way, and you're probably watching this saying like, Trent, who's Trent? I haven't seen Trent in like 17 days. He's been dead a while. <laughs> Right, the team can the team survives without Trent. But once he comes back, you're gonna see the damage starts pouring on again, and we can actually start taking people down. It just becomes really, really hard to kill people 
when you're running that double primo or if you're running uh, the double tank with Salen. I saw some people run Salen truck, Chuck. I tried Salen Chuck. My Chuck's only like six star gear six. It didn't really work out for me very well. I died pretty quickly. But now he's back. Guess who's back? Back again. Trent is back. And now he's basically full health because I got my super heal with Chef. And one thing this battle really does showcase, right? See how I pop the ultimate there just to bring that pep down because I don't want Gorewell going. I don't want her getting a mass assist, on, a big assist hit on me. I want to try to take out these people one at a time, right? But again, one thing that this video is going to really highlight, it's how much better Glider is with a pure city team. I mean, I like Fire Station and... You know, the Lighthouse got a little bit of a rework. It's a little bit different. I'm curious to try it out. But those are role model um, sets. And the role models, now that we have Winston as like a super tank with the role model tag, they're not just a city faction. And honestly, the figures that you're using for the role models are not necessarily the figures that you're going to use for a city team, right? If I'm running pure city, I want to run Chef and Aurora with Glider because the healing and the revives are insane with that. Obviously, I think Primo and Ash are just staples on any type of city or role model team. And if I have to run a fifth, it's probably going to be Sal on my pure city team. So they're really not that good. But in a situation like this, where you get a free seven star Primo and you can throw Trent on there, and yeah, he's you know he's no highway man. And he's not Slimer, but that extra bit of damage helps. Now, as you can see, the last wave is, you know, they throw in a couple Dwayne's. The last wave, they, it doesn't make it harder, right? It just, it's like, if you're really on death's door, I could see how this last wave would be really annoying, but it's kind of hard to not keep your team healthy, right? Just buff, like any buff you do is gonna keep giving you guys health. So just keep buffing, keep using Primo's uh, attack buff. I taunted with Primo a pretty fair amount in this, more than I normally would with Primo. Uh, use Primo to save Sal if you have to. Use Primo's taunt when whenever you have low pe people with low health, because if your Primo dies, you can still get a gold cup, right? So as long as everyone is alive but Primo, because he's an ally technically, you can still get a gold cup in this. So that's also pretty cool that you're at least allowed to have that Primo die and he is a taunting figure. So I like when they give you an ally that, you know, they're there to soak up damage, right? And that's what a lot of us do with our allies in like Brickspedition, we'll take a, you know, a tank, just let them die or Jester, a Jester Go-Go or a Basil, someone that you don't have to worry about them for the next battle. But yeah, we're pretty much cruising right through this, but you're even gonna see like this, this last part still takes a, a while just, just to get these last two figures down, like it still is gonna take you a really long, like longer than it should to just kill two figures between Gorewell's dodge and just Kartoski thrown under stealth sometimes and the heals, it's just really, really, really annoying. But this was definitely the most challenging node and I thought it was one of the most fun nodes and this is why because city doesn't really get used much and it's nice to you know especially for someone like me who's spent a lot of uh, resources leveling up city because i really thought city was going to get their day to shine and they will they will right but it, it's nice for me to be able to use my city characters and yeah i mean this is a, an all seven star city team right and we get to fight some space and yeah, it was really like just a really fun node for me to do. Uh, well, that's pretty much all I got for you today, Knuckleheads. Please remember to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that little bell for some notifications, and as always, remember to knuckle up.